the fact that we even have a Senate chaplain and a House chaplain as well is kind of a weird thing. It's a bit of a contradiction in a country in which separation of church and state is a constitutional hallmark. Even James Madison came to believe it wasn't entirely kosher, but a chaplain opened every day of congressional business, starting with the Continental Congress in 1774, and the tradition has continued. The way this contradiction has been resolved over the years is that whatever his or her specific denomination personally and they've all been Christian, the chaplain prays and leads in a non-sectarian ecumenical way. Also, there are regular guest chaplains, imams, rabbis, Hindu clerics, even the Dalai Lama. Rather than imposing a particular religion on the Congress, the House and Senate chaplaincies are used to reflect America's multi-faith democracy. A couple of miles away from the Capitol on January the 6th, Donald Trump's Save America rally also started with a prayer, but that prayer was a little different. Let every adversary against democracy, against freedom, against life, against liberty, against justice, against peace, against righteousness be overturned right now in the name of Jesus. Let justice be done. Let justice be done. Let justice be done. Let we, the people, have the assurance of a fair and a just election. I thank you for President Trump. I put a hedge of protection around him. I secure his purpose. I secure his destiny. I secure his life, God. And I thank you that he will walk in a holy boldness and a wisdom, God, and that you will go before him. You will be his rear guard, and you will go in front of him this day and every day, God. That was Paula White, Donald Trump's spiritual advisor and White House advisor, delivering a very Trumpian opening prayer on January the 6th. Less, let us be guided by your wisdom, O Lord. More, protect Donald Trump and smite his enemies. There was a lot of this brand of Christian ideology on display that day. Before marching to the Capitol, members of the far-right, violent, proud boys knelt in the street and prayed in the name of Jesus to restore their, quote, value systems and to give them divine protection in what they were about to do. In the crowd attacking the Capitol were crosses and signs saying things like Jesus 2020 and armor of God. Some told reporters they were there to join a fight of good versus evil. And when insurrectionists broke into the Senate chamber, in addition to rifling through senators' papers and scrawling messages to Vice President Pence, they prayed. Jesus Christ, we invoke your name. The problem isn't that the January 6th insurrection and Trump's whole demagogic movement are imbued with Christianity, one of the world's great religions. No. Remember, the United States House and Senate have chaplains who are Christian and deliver prayers every day. And the night before January the 6th, Reverend Raphael Warnock, the longtime pastor at Atlanta's Ebenezer Baptist Church, was elected senator from Georgia. Reverend Warnock and the chaplains are perfectly capable of being very Christian and also existing very happily within the multi-faith and multi-ethnic democracy represented by the United States Congress. None of them are storming the Capitol. No, this particular brand of Christianity that is linked up with the Trump movement is a different kind of thing. Christian nationalism, the belief that the United States should be ruled by Christians and by a certain narrow interpretation of evangelical Christian values is not a new thing. The journalist Michelle Goldberg wrote a book about the rise of Christian nationalism back in 2006. But what's new is the fusion of that ideology with the potent political movement of pro-Trump stop the steal election denialism. Evangelical leaders preaching to their congregations about the stolen election and praising the January 6th attack as a righteous revolution to restore America. It's also about the fusion of religion and race too. 
A poll released in November by the Public Religion Research Institute found that 60% of white evangelical respondents believed the 2020 election was stolen, a far higher share than other Christian groups of any race. The journalist Sarah Posner has written a book on how white Christian nationalists powered Trump's presidency. She put it in this way in an essay this week for Talking Points Memo, quote, a movement that elevated Trump to messianic status was able to convince millions that satanic forces had robbed God's man in the White House of his anointed perch as the restorer of America's white Christian heritage. Their duty as patriotic spiritual warriors was to go to battle on his behalf. Need an example of what that battle looks like even now? Perhaps you've seen this viral clip of Tennessee pastor and January the 6th attendee, Greg Locke, this week. I'm to the place right now, if you vote Democrat, I don't even want you around this church. You can get out. You can get out, you demon. You can get out, you baby butchering election thief. You cannot be a Christian and vote Democrat in this nation. I don't care how mad that makes you. You get pissed off as you want to. You cannot be a Christian and vote Democrat in this nation. They are God-denying demons that butcher babies and hate this nation. Bunch of devils. I'm sick of it. They want to talk about the insurrection. Mm. Let me tell you something. You ain't seen the insurrection yet. You keep on pushing our buttons, you low-down, sorry, compromisers. You God-hating communist America, you'll find out what an insurrection is because we ain't playing your garbage. We ain't playing your mess. My Bible says that the church of the living God is an institution that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the Bible says that we'll take it by force. That's what the Bible says. Wow. Let me ask you this. If a Muslim imam in a mosque said that, looked into the camera and said, you ain't seen an insurrection yet and we'll take it by force. That's what the Quran says. What do you think would happen to that imam? Seriously, what would happen to him? I think we all know. Look, that clip of Locke speaking at his tax exempt church is one of the most bonkers, most disturbing, most extreme things I have seen in recent years. And I say that as someone who spent the past seven years covering the likes of Donald Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene. But here's the thing. Thousands of people attend some of Greg Locke's sermons in person, millions online. He's one of more than a dozen pastors who've participated in this weird Stop the Steal roadshow that features General Michael Flynn and Roger Stone and Eric Trump holding events at churches across the country. And when you're calling Democrats demons and devils, it's like more and more Republicans calling Democrats pedophiles. Devil, devils and demons and pedophiles can't be allowed to win elections. They are by definition ungodly and illegitimate. And anything you do to stop them is justified. And to the newly elected Republican nominee for governor of Pennsylvania, Doug Mastriano, he kind of fuses together the religious and political sides of this movement. He was the Trump campaign's number one ally in the Pennsylvania state legislature in their effort to get Joe Biden's win in Pennsylvania overturned. He marched to the Capitol on January the 6th, running for governor. He campaigned at events like Pennsylvania for Christ, whose organizers claim their goal is to reestablish the kingdom of God in Pennsylvania. And at an event called Patriots Arise for God, Family and Country, Country, where he was gifted a David sword for, quote, fighting for our religious rights in Christ Jesus. We have the power of God with us. We have Jesus Christ that we're serving here. He's guiding and directing our steps. And in November, we're going to take our state back. My God will make it so. Doug Mastriano now has the chance to try to fulfill that prophecy after winning the Republican nomination for governor on Tuesday. Listen to how he described the path ahead at his victory celebration that night. 1 Corinthians 1.27 gives us all hope. God uses the foolish to confound the wise and the weak to confound the strong, right? That's his story. And he uses people like you and me to change history. I always like to say when we make his story our story, we can change history. The future for Pennsylvania under Josh Shapiro is an oppressive regime, not unlike East Germany, where your freedoms will be snatched away. So let's walk in freedom. Let's choose this day. Let's choose this day to serve the Lord. 
If Doug Mastriano is elected governor, he'll appoint the Secretary of State who will oversee the 2024 presidential election in swing state Pennsylvania. A Governor Mastriano would have to personally sign off on the 2024 election results in his state. If he thinks he is just a tool being used for God's plan, and if God's plan is to save Pennsylvania from the oppressive, godless regime of the Democrats, what wouldn't he do to make sure no demonic Democrat ever wins Pennsylvania?